our call with us, uh, participating with us, Dr. Linda. Uh, as I mentioned before, he's a Royal Diamond in Nikan. Uh, he is a wonderful educator and instructor. Um, I, I always can just sit and listen to him speak uh, for hours on end because he is just so insightful uh, in talking about the value of our products in relation to our bodies. Um, he is by, by profession, prior to Nikan, a, a doctor of physiology. Uh, he's also been a very, very successful businessman and he's also been a lecturer and keynote speaker that is uh, highly sought after. Uh, so without further ado, a very special opportunity for us now uh, to have Dr. Linda, uh, our upline, joining us on the call today. Uh, Dr. Linda, over to you. So um, I'm very honored to join you today. And this is Heather's and my passion and our purpose is to share our message, much as uh, uh, we were saying earlier and asking people to join us. And I always like to start with, with telling people how this presentation came about, the self-care awakening. Uh, you know, we cannot put a price on our health. Uh, without it, we pretty much don't have anything. Um, but I was asked to speak uh, the first presentation in Orlando a couple years ago. And as I was working on my PowerPoint up in the hotel room, uh, I had a baseball game on behind me, uh, kind of down low. And as I'm looking at the PowerPoint, I hear this commercial come on, uh, on the TV. And, and here's what it said. It said there are 26 million diabetics in the U.S., 74 million are at risk. Don't worry. Actually said, don't worry. I don't know about you, but I worry. That's a third of the population of the United States. We can treat and manage your diabetes so you can lead a normal, productive life. Now, that message came from what used to be our corner drugstore, which now calls itself your corner wellness center. And it, uh, it's a brainwashing. It's a brainwashing saying it's okay to have type 2 diabetes. Don't worry about it. And they don't make their money keeping us healthy. They make their money uh, basically selling us pharmaceutical drugs. So I kind of changed the presentation. It, it didn't look near as nice as, uh, as it does now, uh, thanks to Heather Abbott, uh, who's a graphic designer and my partner who put this together. And I always thank her for doing that because it's a very uh, uh, nice looking presentation as well. So we coined a term, be healthy by choice, not by chance. And that term's really become our battle cry. And it's pointed to get people to start to think about their health and not leave it to chance because if we do, our chances aren't very good, we're gonna be healthy. It's like spinning a wheel of fortune and hoping that we land on a healthy pie. And this wheel of fortune here is pretty representative of and pervading all socioeconomic classes. Now, the way we deal with this is by treatment. And currently we fill 4.3 billion prescriptions in the US annually. We are constantly asked through advertisement to ask our doctor about the newest and the best new medication to treat and manage. And it's, it's uh, nearly doubled in the last decade. Um, I was in the Mideast a couple, couple years ago doing some, some of these self-care presentations. And I met a physician who was originally from Columbus, Ohio, who relocated uh, to uh, Nairobi, Kenya. And we were having dinner uh, after this presentation. And I asked him, I said, you know, Dr. Ken, What's your biggest health issues in Nairobi? 
And I thought for sure he was going to talk about infectious disease. He said, no, it's chronic disease. Heart attack, stroke, cancer, and diabetes is but we've changed just about everything else around us. Here's the problem. We don't drink enough water. We're dehydrated. We don't get good quality sleep and we carry a sleep deficit. We have weight issues that are fueled by excessive sugar consumption. essential nutrient. And when we think about it that way, uh, hopefully we'll make some changes to drink some more water. So 75% of Americans are chronically dehydrated, but 89% of the population in the UK is not drinking enough water. And here's a graphic that shows this. Notice that virtually almost 20% of Britons drink no water a day. Now that, that to me is absolutely astounding. And, and, and 2%, to 8% drink pretty much what they should be drinking. We lose water every day, just through normal physiological processes and a total of about 10 cups. And failure to drink enough water can cause, and pay attention to these chronic issues because they are repetitive through this presentation can cause fatigue, joint pain, weight gain. We could add diabetes in there as well, headaches, ulcers, high blood pressure, kidney disease, and the list can go on and on. Our body is 70% water. It is important in every physiological process we do. Now pay attention that a loss of 2.5% results in a decrease in efficiency and energy of 25%. So if we're drinking and need to drink at least 10 cups of water a day, what is 2.5% of that? It's two ounces. So this is a very fine line between hydration and dehydration. Many people choose bottled water. They choose it for three reasons. One, they tell me it tastes better, they think it's healthier, and it's convenient. Many taste tests, blind taste tests show it does not taste better. And most bottled water is tap water. There is no regulation of bottled water, uh, so it's really not healthier, and many analysis of different bottled waters have shown a whole host of contaminants. It may be convenient, but my response to that is, don't we often trade our health for the sake of convenience? And I think we'd have to say, yes, we do. Here's the other reason that bottled water is not a good choice. It is not healthy for our planet. It is very polluting. Uh, actually, Heather and I were just down in uh, Long Beach uh, this weekend, and she took some photos. Uh, there was a big storm of all the trash and all the plastic uh, that the uh, Park Service or the Beach Service had scooped into big piles that blew in from the ocean. So if we all say 1,001, one second, 1,500 plastic bottles just ended up in landfills in the ocean every second. Here's a quote from the Epic Times just in August of last year, and it says, dehydration is the mother of all epidemics, and it is the first step we need to take in addressing chronic disease, and I wholeheartedly believe that. So drink half your body weight in ounces per day, or if you're on the metric system, 3.3% of your body weight in kilograms and liters per day. So if you weigh about 70 kilograms, you would drink about two liters a day. 
Cheers. And if you've noticed throughout this entire presentation and when uh, Ben was talking and, and Asia that I was constantly sipping on water. Uh, and that's what to do. Every time we're thirsty, we will just inherently by habit start to sip on water and not gulp it. And, it's, and as we do that, uh, we will maintain hydration because our body will let us know when we need more water. So we, there's sleep deficiency is another problem. And this is on the rise across the UK. Two thirds of Britons have sleep problems and it's been called a public health epidemic. It is here in the US as well, where 70% of us don't get adequate sleep. Sleeping less than seven hours a night can lead to some very, very chronic health conditions. It may sound good, but it is a recipe for chronic sleep deficiency. And we all live busy lives, fast, busy lives. Um, many times we boast or almost wear it as a badge of honor that we sleep four or five hours a night, but we got so much done during the day. And we really don't appreciate that sleep is probably our most productive part of the day when we think it's an unproductive part of the day. And we need to change that, that paradigm as well. So poor sleep, and here's, I just looked this up, the average Briton sleeps less than seven hours per night. Actually, it is six hours and 19 minutes. And that is not near enough sleep for our body to recover. Now, oftentimes you'll hear, hear people say, that's okay, I've had a really busy week, I am going to catch up on my sleep and sleep in on the weekend. Doesn't work. This is a 24 hour circadian cycle where we need eight to eight and a half hours of sleep per night and we will never catch up. So let's dispel that fallacy uh, right away. You won't catch up. You, you want to schedule sleep just like you would schedule any other important activity during your day. Poor sleep can cause fatigue, heart disease, weight gain, diabetes, anxiety, stroke, kidney disease. And again, you're seeing these same type of chronic conditions that are coming up. Here's a quote by William C. DeMint. He is the father of sleep medicine from Stanford University. And it is very powerful. And what he says is healthy sleep has been proven to be the single most important determinant in predicting longevity, more important than diet, exercise, or heredity. We have some weight issues. And this is a global problem too. This is a report from The Lancet, probably one of the oldest, most prestigious uh, medical journals published in the UK, where it says obese people outnumber underweight people for the first time in history. And this is a very large study, 20 years, nearly 20 million people. Uh, so it is a good indication that, that we're having some weight issues. Uh, obesity is a common problem in the UK. It's estimated that two thirds of adults are either overweight or obese, uh, according to some recent health surveys. Here's the problem, excessive sugar consumption. 80% of food items are spiked with added sugar. And I'll give you some figures I came up with from the US here that are pretty enlightening. In 1822, the average American consumed nine grams of sugar a day. 200 years later, it's over 153 grams. That's a 16 fold increase in less than 200 years. As we said, um, we don't change very quickly biologically, but all of a sudden drastically we've changed the food and what's in the food that we're eating. So the number of people with diabetes in the UK is more than doubled in the first 20, in the last 20 years. And that should be disturbing to anyone. Uh, we aren't the only two countries that love sugar. Others do, all right? And here's a list. Uh, currently in the UK, 93 grams of sugar per day are consumed uh, by the average person. Uh, Mexico, 92. None of these levels, even though the US leads, none of these levels are anywhere close to a healthy sugar consumption on a daily basis, which is six teaspoons or 24 grams for women, nine teaspoons or 36 grams per minute. And just recently in the UK, your National Health Service and Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition just halved the amount. In, in other words, they were saying 50 grams a day for women and about 75 grams a day for men. And they've cut that in half 
uh, to go along, which is basically recommended by the American Heart Association. Uh, look at labels. If I ask anybody to do pretty much one lifestyle change, is start looking at labels and start monitoring how much sugar you're actually eating uh, per day. And what I'm talking about is the added sugars to food. Um, I was having dinner with my sister down in, in Irvine. I did an event down there at the headquarters. And I said, great, I'll come over for dinner. She goes, good, I'm gonna make a really healthy dinner. And I got there and she told me what she was serving. And she said, green beans. And I said, I'll probably not eat a lot of the green beans. And she goes, well, you love green beans. Why wouldn't you do that? I said, because they, they are they fresh or frozen? She said, they're frozen. I said, they've probably added sugar to them. And it's probably too much sugar that because I'm monitoring and trying to keep my sugar consumption between 25, 30 grams a day. And she goes, but you love green beans. And I said, well, there's probably sugar added. You know, sisters, as, as they will, she responded, well, there is not. There's no sugar <laughs> added to the green beans. Why would they ever do that? So she pulled out the package and looked at it, and there were six grams of sugar per half cup serving. And uh, that was astounding to her. And of course, she had lots of questions as to why that would be added, but uh, there are lots of responses to that. But the point is, we don't need sugar in our green beans. So each of us have more than 200 contaminants, and we live in a toxic world. And this is basically global as well. As well. 93% of us have bisphenol A. Uh, that comes from beverages, bottled water, sodas, anything packaged in plastic. Um, and this is a very disruptive uh, compound. Uh, it's the first time it, we are currently experiencing the highest infertility in humans we have ever seen on this planet. And I blame this compound. We are seeing young women, young girls hitting puberty at eight and nine years of age. Again, I blame this compound, BPAs, bisphenol A's. Um, I think in this category, we also want to protect ourselves from man-made electromagnetic fields, Wi-Fi's, and all the other things that could be disruptive to the balance of our body. Here's a list of chronic issues that basically have been related to toxic exposure or environmental toxins, what I call pollution in people, a sequestering environmental toxins. The, tops, the, the, the ones in red are the top six, but there are some diseases here that we never even heard of a couple of generations ago. And it, did they not exist? Um, I wouldn't say they didn't exist, they probably did, but there were such minor uh, incidents in the population, we didn't hear about them. But now they're very prevalent. Here's a study from the Environmental Working Group in 2005, that tested the umbilical cord blood of newborn infants and they detected nearly 300 chemicals. Now we sequester these toxins and as we sequester them, the amount in our bodies grow to where all of a sudden we hit a tipping point to where it manifests itself as a disease. The disturbing thing about this uh, study to me is that if newborns are already compromised with an average of let's say 300 toxic chemicals in their body, how long chronologically does it take for them to hit that tipping point for it to be expressed as a chronic issue? And I'd say not long and our current statistics show that chronic diseases are showing up earlier and earlier in our lifetimes. It's not unusual for people in their 20s or early 30s to have some chronic issues. So these are symptoms of, and I love to show this presentation, especially with healthcare professionals, and I ask the question, these are symptoms of what? And I get chronic disease after chronic disease after chronic disease. They are also symptoms of exactly what we're talking about, dehydration, poor sleep, weight issues, and environmental toxicity. Now, this is the problem, and from this presentation, you can surmise that just one of these agents or factors are enough to cause a chronic condition, but many of us experience, if not all of them, most of them, <laughs> and this effect is not additive. It is exponential in how that affects our health.
So here's the problem. Here's the solution. It's pretty simple. So I don't think any of you listening to this uh, this evening uh, would disagree with this. It's pretty much common sense, but we don't pay enough attention to it. We want to be hydrated. We want to have a good quality sleep. We want to watch our weight and reduce our sugar consumption. And we want to protect our bodies. Now, the best way I know to do that and why I am an advocate and why I am, it is Heather's and I both passion and purpose to share this message is the wellness home where we use science tech, and technology to replicate nature. So any of us and anyone and everyone can be healthy by choice. We have packs. These packs address these specific issues. We can stay hydrated with our water pack. We can also reduce our body burden of contaminants by drinking filtered healthy water. We can help detox at night with a great sleep and use the sleep system for a great night's sleep. Uh, we can feed our bodies with nutrition, with our core nutrition pack, our Kenzen Vital Balance, our J Greenzymes, and our Super Siaga. We can protect, we can give our bodies more balance and protect ourselves with our energy pack, and especially with the new Kinko Ground, which is a great addition to the wellness home. So take a look at this for just a second. And this is an updated slide that I used to use a long time ago. Each of us have 10 trillion slide, 10 trillion cells <laughs> in our bodies. We need to replace 6 billion a day. In the time I just said that, every one of us replaced about 50 million. And our bodies are pretty amazing that we can do that. In fact, if we look at them, uh, it's, it's figured by cell life, none of us chronologically are any older than 10 years of age. And sometimes I act like that. But anyway, <laughs> that being said, um, these are what every cell requires so they can renew themselves. Here is the products, the technologies from the wellness home that provide those needs so we can have healthy cells. So what will consumers want in their next healthcare experience? More importantly, what do you want? What we ask is for people to pay attention to this, to join us in a self-care revolution, either for themselves and help us share it with others. I think it's one of the most noble things that we all can do. Heather and I have a webpage called the selfcarehub.com. Uh, you can download many of these slides. You can look at different videos. And the coolest thing about the wellness home is any home can be a wellness home. Our mission is every home a wellness home, and we join you, we, we invite you to join us in, in our passion and our purpose to help do that. Um, there's lots of tools at the Hub, and we invite you to, to go there, subscribe. We do a weekly blog, and uh, just great information to help you share this message.